audio is good. Oh, well, we were talking the whole time. And <laughs> that's over, fun. Over the music? Technical Sweet. difficulties. That was cool. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome to Endorian Guitar Works. Welcome back to Endorian Guitar Works Backstage. I am Matt Ackerman. I'm Brian McCoy. Folks know me as Bones. But... Bones. Dr. Bones McCoy. Formerly of the Enterprise. Well, yeah. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we wanted to address a couple things before we kept going and, and chatting. Uh, first of all is learning our systems better because there's a lot happening here. Uh, second of all, we want to address the fact that we're going to be looking at our phones here and there. And it isn't because we're bored or distracted. It's because we want to engage with you. And uh, please use the comments. And we're going to be talking about some stuff today that really it affects us all. Uh, if you play guitar or you don't play guitar or you just follow us because you feel sorry for our, our social media efforts or... Maybe you're in a different place uh, right now than you were two years ago at the beginning of the pandemic when we all walked into our houses and didn't come out for what seemed like eternity. Um, today we're going to be talking about finding your purpose. Um, last show we talked, last show is the first show, and we talked about our really cool experience going to the Miles Kennedy and Slash show. And um, sort of the undertones of that show were like all about how we combine, how you can combine musical styles. And um, I thought there was some good conversation, especially from the audience on that one. So Dolphin we wanted to cover, what's that? Dolphinately. Dolphinately? Dolphinately. <laughs> so let's <clears throat> cover some more housekeeping items. <clears throat> um, we wanted to give you a clear vision of what backstage actually is, right? So we put it on the screen for you. It's a guided look at life, experiences, and the ways and means of a guitarist's journey. That doesn't mean that we are Grammy-winning artists. Uh, it doesn't mean that we know every secret in the book, because let's face it, we're broadcasting from a basement, right? <laughs> but who doesn't, right? But we're trying to facilitate a conversation here to help you... Um, and learn from the things that we've learned and learn from the experiences of others and create a community where we can all come and ask questions of each other and really just share the secrets. Yeah, and really, I mean, we're here to learn as well. So uh, any secrets you have, please do share. Um, we're facilitators in this role, I think. Uh, we want to be... We're creating... Uh, another side to the community to where we can be open and honest with each other, share our experiences, and have a good time doing it. Learn a few things here and there. Uh, whether it be finding your purpose, how to meld your styles with somebody else, how to fix your guitar. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of things on docket that we can uh, we can check out. Got a lot of friends and uh, other contacts we're going to be bringing in uh, as this journey unfolds uh to talk about their experiences in studio on the road um you know working with major recording artists or being major recording artists or playing maybe it's that busker on the street that that uh, you've seen a few times so um you know we'll run the gambit and you know it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or if you've been being recorded for 30 years you are welcome we want to share experiences ours and yours so yeah join the community come on in let's have a chat let's have a chat so a little less importantly than traditional house and keeping items but i did make a promise earlier today and i want to make good on that promise i promised that this would be sort of like light and festive hmm. um and I didn't is, show... Is that what these are for? Yeah, but I didn't show up wearing green. No, I told, I told him not to. Yeah, I have a, <laughs> I have a green wig that I was going to put on. Um, this is ours, and this can be yours. Uh, so we decided that um, we're going to make this an interactive contest. So uh, if you share this podcast, and if we get 50 people, 50 people, because you can't have a contest with 
four or five or six. Uh, if we get 50 people watching, we will put names in a hat and send you a bottle of Jameson. And it'll probably be nicer than that one. Bigger, nicer. Oh, and no, if, that's pretty nice. I understand. Yeah. It's, bottle of Jameson's nice. That's and nice. to be inclusive and respectful of people's choices, if you're not uh, an imbiber, that's cool too. We'll find something else of equal or greater value uh, to send your way. Cool. Sounds good. Right on. So let's get down to it. Um, I put out a poll and I said, what do you want to talk about today? I found myself on an airplane a couple weeks back reading a book that I should have read a long time ago. And it was given to me by a new friend that I made, uh, actually a sister of a family friend who is now my friend. And it was a auto, uh, Mark Lanigan's autobiography. And I found myself reading this book. She gave, I, we visited in Chicago in last August. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she said, you should take this book and read it. And, um, I started reading the book and then I didn't really have a chance to get very far into it, but I had this plane trip a couple weeks back and I said, I'm going to read this book. And my God, what a page turner. And as I'm reading this book, I realized that that's, that was episode two. Like, you could just talk about Mark Lanigan you could. all so, day. And, especially and since we're somewhat connected to him because somewhat. we went to college <laughs> where he grew up in Central, uh, in Ellensburg at Central Washington University and is where we went, where we actually met. Apologies if you're not familiar with Mark Lanigan. So you know him from Screaming Trees and uh, Queens, Queens of the, the Stone, Stone Age. Age. Uh, did solo stuff. He worked with quite a few bands, um, Mad Season. Mm -hmm. So, So as I started piecing together thoughts for that show i realized that that was going to take a lot more prep work and it wasn't going to be episode two so episode two um i put out to the crowd and i said what do you want to talk about and um by and large people came back and they said i want to talk about purpose or i want to talk about how do i know what i should be doing and what is right um a couple different ways of saying the same thing right and somebody said they wanted to talk about what why uh why everyone hates poison. <laughs> uh, it's not just C.C. DeVille. I'll tell you right now. I don't think we're going to do that on episode two. <laughs> Although, you know, C.C. DeVille's back in the band. Yeah? Yeah, that's what I've heard recently. They're going to go on tour. <laughs> so if you're just joining in... Oh, hey, Chris Moore is on. Chris Moore is a very awesome guy. He uh, is the father of one of my of my best friend growing up from uh, from elementary school. What? No comments? Yeah, no kidding. Come um, on, guys. Chris Chris was my insurance agent for a while, <laughs> and um, and he's retired now. So I had to find a different insurance agent. <laughs> well, that just means he's got time to send us some comments. It does. It does. We should have some comments. <laughs> Mr. Not, Miller. Not meaning to call you out, sir. I don't know you that well, probably. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, we're here to have fun. This is going to be a light a light episode, or lighter episode, <sighs> anyway. Um, and I'm going to hold my guitar for part of it, because yeah. I don't like being on stage without a guitar. And this makes him uncomfortable. Um, so, finding your purpose. I think this is really timely, because, honestly, I thought that maybe it was just me being... I don't know. I've always been kind of a dreamer and I've always found myself in positions and, and, you know, doing one job or doing another job or striving for one goal or falling short and, and asking myself, am I, am I, am I messing up? Am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? What am I doing wrong? And why am I actually here? And of course this is really, you know, amplified in the, in the pandemic. Here we are coming out of, and you know, how you feel about the pandemic um, this isn't a conversation about healthcare or politics or anything that you want to make it be other than shit changed in the last two years, no matter what. And, um, you know, I found myself working from home, um, taking on roles that I would never have ever imagined or even, um, you know, taking jobs, like knowing, like a going into a certain work climate of what I've even signed up for that, um, Mm. Even, you know, not even relating to health, um, to what was going on in the health of the world, but just 
how we choose to do business, how we have to do business, how we have to take care of our kids. And I really found myself agonizing over this. Wow, do I need to make a change? What is my calling? What is my purpose? And it wasn't until I had a conversation with like my doctor, um, where even he, like we think of doctors as leaders and people that we trust, um, people that make a pretty decent amount of money. And uh, he looked me straight in the eyes and he said, you're like the fifth person that I've talked to about this this week. And even I am, he was thinking about leaving his practice to do something that was more meaningful to him. And I thought that was kind of a big statement, you know? So that, that leads to the question, is that why there's been this whole, you know, exodus from work? Like people leaving their jobs that are, where they feel underpaid and, and undervalued um, because they're realizing, hey, there's other things that are more important than that work. Yeah. Um, I know for me, when this all started, I kind of embraced it fully and took advantage of the opportunity to do more things around the house and got some projects done. We've been, my wife and I have been working on our home for quite some time uh, since we moved in, you know, doing renovations. That ended quickly. Uh <laughs> And, you know, I was, I was split in time working mm -hmm. from home and, and working in the office and I ended up going back to the office full time the first time around when things kind of were clearing up and getting better as they were. Um, and then things shut down again and we just stayed in the office. Um, uh, it was kind of uncomfortable in certain ways and other ways it wasn't because, you know, we worked for the state. There was the mandates that people were uncomfortable with, so that was another level of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But we knew that everybody coming in, being state employees, because our front office is open to state employees of other agencies to come in, we knew that they were going to be vaccinated, they were going to be safe, they were going to be masked up, whatever. So that wasn't really an issue. But there's, it's all the weird stuff that you don't think about happening that ends up kind of getting to you. Yeah, I think over time and you do start questioning when you have all these unknown stresses kind of just pop up or stressors that have been there for a while, but they're underneath these larger ones and they kind of come to the surface. It can really change your perspective and make you question things. Yeah. So purpose and how it relates to, so, you know, we talk about how it relates to just the average Joe and then, but as a musician, like what's it do for you, right? Now, someday I'd love to bring a touring musician in here and say, did you ever doubt your purpose or your calling as a, as a touring musician, as a professional musician when, when there were no shows, yeah. right? Guarantee they say yes. For me, I found, so there was this interesting thing that happened to me, like, Every time I look at what happened over the last two years, I've, it, it's really easy to look at the downside, but I also realize how it played out in my life and where it actually was timed quite nicely. Um, and I mean that with respect and, and honoring everyone who suffered. Um, but in about 2019, I had this, I was still questioning my purpose and what am I doing? I found myself, I've been an office worker of over 10 years by that point. And, you know, I picked up a guitar when I was 14 years old and I played and I called myself a musician and a guitar player. And this is my identity. This was my entire identity. I didn't want to do anything else. Um, and then from about the age of 18 or 19 on, I just made safe decision after safe decision after safe decision. And became a person that I didn't even recognize in the mirror anymore. And then I had this ability, you know, people would say, oh, so you play guitar? And I realized that really what I was is I was a guitar collector. Like, they hung on my wall. But I didn't really play them. And so this was my opportunity to redefine my purpose and say, okay, well, you're home a lot now. And you're working. And you're taking care of family. And you're doing everything. But maybe you can carve some time out for you. And that's when I, you know, not literally, but that's kind of when I lit the guitar back on fire again, right? Well, there was that one. There was that one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to show that at some point here on uh, on your Endorian Guitar Works page. Did I light one on fire? That I've forgotten? Or were you going to? Was it this one that you were going to? 
Oh no, I did light one on fire. <laughs> it wasn't this one. Uh, killer, the point is, is that killer finish. Just <laughs> <laughs> when you're on a journey to find your purpose or to redefine what your purpose is or really figure out like who you're meant to be, it can, it can start to feel really lonely, right? And it can be confusing. And I think part of that, to, to, to take a long meandering conversation and kind of bring it back to a, a center point, is that I think it's supposed to be. Uh, because our purpose, I think so, much, so many times, especially as musicians and as creatives, we anchor to this idea that our purpose is 100% to be creative. But we have these other competing responsibilities and things that we love, you know, our families, our wives, our husbands, our, our children, our friends, our jobs, our... Um, but as creatives, you want to pour yourself 100% into one thing and you find yourself realizing that you can't do that. And so you question your purpose because you're failing. You've taken 100% of yourself and you have to spread it over how many responsibilities. And if you can't give 100% to everything, it feels like a personal failure. So then, how is it, how can you find that place to where you switch gears? For me, it was recognizing that, like, your purpose is more how you are actualizing what you're doing as to where you're aligned in the moment, right? You don't have to have one this idea that my purpose is to be a guitar player or my purpose is to be a father or my purpose is to be a husband. It doesn't, it's not 100% all the time in that moment. Like when you are present with your children, your purpose is to be a father. When your kids go to bed or, you know, when you have that minute to sit down and be a creative, your purpose is now to be a guitar player. And you can sort of, once you start to realize that like your purpose is sort of a moving target, it's not this static state of being, right? Where, where this defines me 100% of the time, um, but it is a fluid thing. It is a moving target. And as long as you are adaptable and are able to be present and notice when your body, when your mindset uh, is switching gears naturally that you are able to flow with it and be present in that moment. And sometimes that means putting down the guitar and other times it means picking up the guitar. So do you think it's relevant to say that you can have a greater purpose, like an overarching purpose, like a purpose to serve that can change what that means can change? Totally. Was it? Yeah, I mean, that's like the whole, that's the whole reason for this, right? Right. right. Um, you know, if, I think uh, anyone in my life would tell me, would, would say that I was probably supposed to be a teacher and I didn't want to be a teacher. Uh, I wanted to get as far away from that as I possibly could. Um, I wanted to be a musician and then I chickened out of that cause there wasn't enough money in it. And I let too many people tell me that you needed to have a, a day job <laughs> if you want to make money, if you want to support a family. Um, and I'm 40 now and we cooked up this idea that, well, what if we could educate just sort of in a different way? That's what this whole community thing is about. Um, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> We're not well, high. I was talking um, about, you know, having a great, the greater overarching purpose yeah, and greater how, overarching the, purpose, how yeah. the definition of that can change over time. So like you and I are both have day jobs. Mm -hmm. We serve in those roles. Um, in some way that that's a purpose, right? To yeah. serve. And, and we use our careers. Service. Thank in you. Service. However, I'm going to sit here and tell you that service is important while it, forgetting it, that the question was about service. It's but very fact, important. It's yeah. true. But like as a musician, are you not also serving a greater good in that you're bringing art and entertainment to people? Yeah. Right. Um, so like you can have a greater overarching purpose mm -hmm. that ch the definition of it changes as you're going through life at different points in time. You're serving your children when you're being a dad. Yep. That's still service. So. And service can still be, you know, like, 
I already know the conversation. If if there were people in the room right now, I mean, there's some people. What's up, Ron Archer? Man, I am so glad to see you on here. Yeah, we're gonna try to crush it for you. Right? Um, because this can, I mean, this 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 can only go so far, right? You have this conversation about creativity and purpose, and like, if we all lived in this happy world where there, you didn't have to be money and you could do whatever you wanted, and blah 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 blah. But eventually, you know, fin- finances come in to play, and. Like service, I think is, is, you know, if your purpose is service, I think your mentality probably goes to this place of you'll never, you will always live in scarcity and mm-hmm. you will not have the means to do what you want to do. You will not be able to afford the vacations. You will not be able to afford the car or the opportunities for your children, right? That, that, that you see big business people going after all the time. And I would challenge you to like reconsider that notion. Um, there is so much there is so much power in service and this idea that like if you give it away right like there's knowledge out there like there are a lot of this conversation that we're having right now is just based on experiences and it's anecdotal but a lot of it's going to resonate with somebody and that will keep people coming sharing that and 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 ignoring this idea that that they're that that something has to be profitable in order to be worthy. Like service is huge because when you serve somebody, you lift them up and you give them the tools in order to build their own thing, right? So, I don't know. I guess being in a being involved in finding your purpose within service does not mean that you're putting yourself in a corner of never being profitable or not being able to afford things. It just means that what you're doing is you're bringing people along with you on your journey mm-hmm. to success. Mm-hmm. That's true. Poke holes on that. True. Do it. I would love somebody write a comment and tell me why that's wrong. I, I would like to think too that <laughs> if you do have a, have your grounding in service and you're a musician that you could serve the art you yeah. can serve the, the instrument, serve the music. And, and you, then you don't necessarily feel the need to, you know, become wealthy off of it. I know for myself, the band that I'm in, you may or may not have heard of Gunslinger. Matt and I have both played in, in that band. Thank you, sir. I need to get it learned. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. That would be perfect for Gunslinger. Um, you know, we we didn't go into it trying to make a million dollars and... We, we find it really cool that we sold a CD to Russia, you know, or to, to <laughs> Shit, Finland. <dude. laughs> Not to Putin. Yeah, yeah. Rootin' tootin' Putin. Um, no, but, you know, we're big in Germany, apparently. Um, just like David Hasselhoff. But it's not about the money. It's We're fortunate enough to have enough money to be able to sustain ourselves through our careers. Uh, my, my guitarist, Jim, and I founded the band... Jim had written a couple of tracks and and his his purpose is his day job. Mm-hmm. He he owns an engineering firm and he is uh, an amazing engineer and he loves what he does. So this is his kind of it's a, it's his side gig, it's his release, right? And so neither of us really went into it to become rock stars or anything like that. Um, but to have fun and to share our love of heavy metal with the world and, and, or at least our small little corner of it. Um, so yeah, in that sense, if we considered service as a main driver, as a purpose, we're serving the music. We're serving the enjoyment of others over ourselves in that and and, i mean not over ourselves along with ourselves so you know we're we're working on trying to build that more and and again like like you're saying it's not about money's great don't get me wrong we want to get paid when we play a show we're gonna sell cds (laughs) but we're not expecting to become this overnight sensation and end up with a huge record deal and, and all those other kind of stuff. So we're going to play the music regardless of that. I love everything you said. I'm also learning how to wave at people while they sign in because that's, 
I'm, I'm trying to learn how to multitask. Man, you know what? I'm going to put on this camera here just so people can have a little bit of appreciation for this nonsense that's going on over here. And because I want to change this up. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. That's our this setup. Is, this that's is what we're looking this at. This is what's going on over here. Eh, that's probably not even... You know, is that even important? Um, so yeah, probably not, we're but running whatever. broadcasting software and trying to do this all at once. And so anyway, yeah, you know, and, and if you live through your purpose, right, and whether that's a musician, whether that's being a musician or whether that's a different type of service or whether that is like anything, like I think about the ways like be careful about the way we talk about these things, right? You know, because like, again, yeah, we still have day jobs and those things are very, very important. And the people that I work with on a daily basis are near and dear to me and I learn from them so incredibly much, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is, like, if your 100% passion was your day job, you wouldn't be doing side hustles. That's, that's right? true. It's 100% you wouldn't, true. You wouldn't walk away. You would call that eight to five. This is my purpose. Or this is to finance my purpose, right? And then you go do these other things. But you don't burn the candle at both ends because you're 100% satisfied with what's going on during the day. It's because you're living for something bigger, right? And I'm, you know, right now I find myself in this pioneering, this idea that we can create this community to speak with musicians, speak with guitar players, and really just kind of give them a backstage look. Like dealing with that, dealing with that emotional crisis that comes just inherently with being a guitar player. You know, and then I talk with my 13 year old daughter when I'm taking her to school and I and, and like literally like my heart's beating out of my chest with the pride of like the fact that two people listened to me talk about something and then came to me after the fact saying like, dude, that really, really helped me. That is way more meaningful mm -hmm. than anything I got paid to do. Right. Because there is value in service. There is profitability in service, whether that profit comes in the forms of dollars or comes in the in the form of, of, of having a feeling of self-worth that allows the next person to to live another day right right as create and you know this because as a creative you don't have to say it publicly you don't have to ever write it down no one ever has to listen to you say these words but as a creative we've all been there we've been as low as you can get and we also know what it takes it takes service and it takes your it takes your purpose and identifying with your purpose and being able to give that to somebody, whether it's in the form of music or whether it's in the form of a helping hand, um, that is what, that's what keeps us going. Yeah, that's, and uh, Kevin Seymour, thank you. Hell yeah, Kevin also, Moore. Uh, hi to Jeff Thibodeau and... Uh, Tebow. Jeff Tebow. Tebow, excuse yeah. me. That's I'm, okay. I apologize for That's okay, I don't think he'll hold a grudge. And... Forget Fregogo writes music. Thank this that's uh, that's Vic Victoria Fregoso. Yes. She does she does yes. the uh, Tuesdays with Toya. I caught her show last night. So cool. I tried to catch the show last night. I I logged in just as you were signing off. So I, I invited him. He didn't show up. I was I was having family time. I'm sorry. We do that occasionally. Um, so. so this is the time to. Um, to give us some thoughts, right? <laughs> yes, Kevin, we're going to give you some recognition. <laughs> this is, see, is we're trying to do this. Is why we're looking at our phones, like we said earlier. We, we're going to look down at our phones to try to see who's commenting, so we can get you guys involved. This whole idea is to have the community, um, and and really, it's a two-way street. We're not. We don't want to just sit here and talk at you. Talk back. That's why we're doing a live thing. Um, we'll look at when we repost these things we'll look at comments there too um and try to incorporate some of that into the episodes as we move forward so again this is our, our second episode um we have no idea how long this is going to go yeah we'll some of these are going to suck and ever. some of them are going to be awesome and that's yeah. just really you know it's all about learning how to do this right you obviously can tell that this is not a high dollar operation but we're trying to give back the best we can and uh Victoria is thanks says thanks again for watching and uh, love the setup and totally understand the family time so thank you I appreciate that. So we've talked about purpose we went off the rails a few times I think we evolved how purpose really has to do with service whether that's service of yourself service of your community or service of like a loved family member. Yeah well what's um, what's your definition of purpose yeah. what's your purpose what's your purpose share with us what your thoughts are. 
Full send. Full bro. send. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Ron Thanks, is bro. doing. Uh, Ron is doing some amazing stuff. I want to give a shout out to Ron. Met, Mr. Met, Ron Archer. Ron Archer. I met him through my uh, my coaching group, and Ron is doing some amazing photographic work. Oh, right on. Uh, I didn't know any of Ron's work before I started seeing the stuff that he was sharing on social media, and the guy is a madman with portraits. I think his dad is a wildlife photographer as well. Wow. Um, right on, man. Ron, feel free to like put your stuff in the comments here. I want people to see your work. It's really good. Definitely. Yeah. When you know, and that's the fact a, that we've got a photographer watching the show for guitar players, I love it. I, I, I love, love it, it too. And it, you know, it. I've got another friend who's also a photographer, uh, does a lot of music uh, photography, works with tons of bands. Um, recently did some work with the Circle Jerks at their most recent show uh, in Seattle. And uh, I'd love to have him on talk talk about, you know, his experience in the music industry because he's got kind of an interesting uh Interesting perspective being behind a camera <laughs> yeah. in front and behind the bands yep. during their shows. So, um, appreciate you too, Ron Archer. Okay, so purpose to share joy and compassion, usually through music. What was that? I, Say that one more time. The purpose <laughs> to share joy and compassion. Usually through music. Thank I you, 100% yes. 100% agree with that. And Ron Archer also is a musician. That's right. Don't forget. Okay, well we're going to get you on here as a guest artist, Ron. There you go. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm going to go switch my line 6 over to metal and we're going <laughs> to There you go. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Another show. Soon, soon, Matt. We'll get that second Gunslinger record. You could be, you'll be uh, doing those double leads with Jim, and we'll be rocking hard. So, what do y'all think? We hit the uh, this this episode really was supposed to be about free talk, and that's why I didn't want to just get on here and bullshit and talk about what's the latest song. What's the latest song that's inspired you? I wanted to have sort of a, a structure, and I think we we went through that. So, um, let's talk about what's working. Let's talk about what's not. Let's talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. Um, I'm sort of interested in knowing we, we've changed up a few things, um, just to make this work. Um, so you tell us, like, should we put the guitar away? Do you want us to play more music? Do you want us to put up another camera so we can, uh, like, I don't know, put a live band in here? Why isn't that working now? There it is. Should we put something... Watch, watch me not know what I'm doing. Technical difficulties again? Is that? Oh, we put there something is. there and have like people playing guitar and doing live shows from a basement while children try to sleep. <laughs> what you do is you kick the children out for the weekend, man. Mm -hmm. It's got to be strategic. Or do we have more contests and invite you all over here? Well, let's just do a Ron, live, Ron, do a live we'll, show. We will take you up on the uh, photography of us doing badass badassery. Okay. Badass, sir. I like it. Appreciate that fully. Cool. Well, so yeah, I mean, is there anything else you guys, uh, any other ideas you want to talk about? Any other purpose that you want to put out there to discuss? Um, we're here and uh, we want to have a conversation tonight. We'll probably be coming back in the next few weeks with episode three. Um, you know, whether that is the continuation of the conversation about our uh, recently departed brother in music, um, as Matt was discussing earlier or not, um, I think it might be kind of a cool conversation to take the what you were reading about and, and now my mind is blank. Uh, no, the, where I was going with that, honestly, in his, specifically as I'm reading this, okay, it was a trip, right? We went to school in Ellensburg, Washington. Yeah. That's where Screaming Trees started. And Mark is detailing things in a book that if you were reading somebody else's autobiography, you would just be reading these details in the book. But it was kind of like he was... 
he's naming names. <laughs> he's explaining how it's going without naming names, right? So now I understand why when I walked into that one electronics store, when I was when I was 19 years old and mm -hmm. in Ellensburg, mm -hmm. Washington, for the first time, and I walked into this old electronic store with a screaming tree, signed guitar in the window, and a guy who may or may not have had the same name that was used in the book, why he acted <laughs> a certain way, and it was like completely confirmed 20 years after the fact, right? Like this guy, I'm meeting a person that at the time I didn't know who he was. Now I've read a book, and now I know who he was. And it's just, it's, it's like gospel truth. Like I, know, just, just, I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. Yeah. It, and what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, but and it was just so, it, was, also, it was like time warping. Matt and I have a little bit of a different experience Never. with this because I grew up listening to the Screaming Trees thanks to my older brother. Um, and I, I was fully immersed in that. Um, and, you know, luckily later in life I, I was able to meet uh, the Connor brothers and, and everything as well. And through my brother and I having a record label and, and working, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I remember walking into that store and knowing exactly who that guy was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so Scott yeah. Campbell says would be fun to go over songs and guitar solos, kind of like, why is this solo unique and stuff like that. That's Dude, name a solo. Really cool. Let's do this. Let's do this now. You tell, know, tell me what solo you want to go actually, over. Actually, I can I can talk to this because a friend of mine just okay. posted on his Facebook a video of an opera singer who does like blind reacts to music she's never heard. She was listening to Pantera's "Cemetery Gates." She had never heard it before, and she was just blown away <laughs> by it. And then, of course, comes that solo from "Dime." Yeah, considered one of the top hundred guitar solos sure. of all time. Yeah. That, I mean, that's one right there. That guy, yeah. Dime could throw a solo out like nobody's business. Right? I'm wishing that we had had this conversation you know, like six months ago because I learned that solo and then promptly forgot it. <laughs> if you back the tape up like 35 uh, minutes to when we were talking about how we rediscover purpose and like I took pandemic to like, you know, reintroduce myself to the guitar, I kind of went on this mission where I was... I was learning massive amounts of music, but only in a life in such a short life cycle that I would learn it, perform it, and forget it. Yeah, which is weird. Like I didn't even know you could do that. I thought that once you learned a tune, it was there. It's not really the way it works. Um, which is why you always got to keep practicing. That's right. But yeah, so like there was one point where I had that uh, tuned down, and then probably within two weeks I forgot. It's gone. It's just, well, it's, it's, boom. It's probably because that's a very unique solo, and part yeah. of that is because of all the modulations in it, because. I mean, throughout that song, he's doing things really melodic and slow, and then mm -hmm. it goes into the fast metal stuff, and then he rips this solo that's just, I mean, it's modal, mm -hmm. which is obviously, you know, you find that more in a metal, metal music than you do in pop rock or anything like that. Um, you'll find it probably in jazz and things like that as well, but it, I mean, it's super modal. It's got... Uh, modulations throughout and then after the solo even he goes in and starts like mimicking some of the voice the voicings from Phil and I mean it's just that's one to talk that's just one out of yeah however many well then you have to get into conversations about do you prefer the studio cuts or do you prefer the live cuts oh well, there's that like I have a really hard time listening to any version of Cemetery Gates that didn't come off of the, the live version that was captured on 101 Proof mm -hmm. I can understand that there's there's something about live cuts yeah. for me as well yeah. where it's and I think it's just because there's part of it's that written part but part of it's that in the moment emotion right you can't mimic that in the studio in studio, it's very. It. In studio, <laughs> everything is very. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it seems like in studio, there's. It's kind of. It's pristine. You're hitting it. Yeah. You're getting that moment in time, but it's pristine and it's. It's. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. There's just not. I don't think there's enough there. It, it, I want I want the live experience myself. I like that live because there's a little bit more edge to it. There's motion and it changes every time you hear it. We might be losing our feed. I can't tell. 
Oh, it's still showing still live. Still says it's live, but Instagram on the phone says it doesn't like us. And we're Interesting. paused. I'm still, I'm still rocking. Oh, okay. Well, fantastic. But my phone also sucks, so I don't know. What else? Um, so Ron says... Ron says, "Yeah, uh, what's y'all's favorite genre to play? You ever fall into the metal trap, metalcore trap in the early 2000s? No, thank God. Um, <laughs> I'm a traditional metal punk rock guy, classic rock guy. I grew up with the oldies, singing under the under the dock of the bay. Um, you know, my favorite. Oh, no, there it goes. Seems good to me. Nope, All right, cool. Going. Um, my favorites the." Kind of right now, anyway, is really the sludgy, kind of stonery metal, um, doom, that kind of thing. Uh, although, with our band Gunslinger, we play traditional 80s uh, British new wave metal. So it's not new wave. Uh, yeah. The uh, priest maiden style. Um, and we are going to be working on our second record. We have a couple tracks done. We're working. I'm gonna sit on... closer to you because oh. I'm. Ooh, let's get close. Um, too far off the screen. We got a couple tracks done. We're introducing Matt as our third guitarist on this record. Hopefully, um, Those are, we need our fourth and our fifth guitarist though. So like, if you want to, if you want to be a fourth. Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, we only need. We really only need three. I mean, and I'll be only playing part time probably. Yeah. Um, it sounds like my brother might be coming back to play bass, at least partially. So. But um, we'll have to save this for a different show, or we're gonna have to introduce all the characters. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so I grew up listening to like all the right and the wrong kinds of music, right? It was it was, it was such a trip growing up. Um, I <laughs> oh, this is gonna sound so disrespectful because I know it's really through the eyes of you know what I remember as a five and a six year old. But you know, I I, I you know we had Wham, <laughs> and uh, Wham. and Billy Joel, and Michael Jackson. You you can't you can't be mad. I'm really not mad. I'm Jackson. not mad. But so I'll tell you guys a fun story about about when I knew I wanted to be a guitar player, and this probably should have come up way back in purpose, right? Was it was this Prince? It was not Prince. Oh, because damn Prince. It was um, hearing the beat it solo for the first time, and of course I was a kid, right? So uh, I had no idea that this was Dweezil Eddie. Zappa. <laughs> what? Wasn't that Dweezil Zappa? No, it was Eddie. Oh, Eddie was on that one. Yeah. Dweezil was on, uh, uh, what was it? What was the other one? Dweezil was on you one of those. You got me. I have to go fact check now. So, I wanted to play guitar. No, I was in, you're like, right about kindergarten or some shit like that. And, of course, I'm not, I'm not getting a guitar because you don't buy a kid a guitar. You should, but you don't. <laughs> um, so, my dad did the best he could. And that was uh, walked out into the garage and got a couple pieces of plywood and nailed them together and got a probably a two by four. It was probably a two by two. And he nailed that to the plywood and we cut a hole in it and then a bunch of nails. And um, and I got like string and dental floss and stretched them down the neck. So like it was this like nine nine hundred pound guitar that you know, honestly, it was a massive safety hazard considering my mother ran an in-home daycare and we were downstairs dancing. Osho would with say no. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure I accidentally hit somebody with that one time. Well, you almost hit me with that too. So yeah, I, mean, I know. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we would. Uh, I would sit down there and break my dad's needles, record needles, uh, <laughs> uh. popping the uh, popping the Michael Jackson albums on the turntable over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And rocking out to that solo. And from there, it was, you know, just, just the hits that were on the radio. I remember uh, falling in love with Tom Cochran's Life is a Highway before it was bastardized by Rascal Flatts. And, um, Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. And then it has a good beat. But, and then when I finally learned, okay, so like, I can't, I'm going to make a global confession here. Like, I didn't discover Metallica until Load was coming out. Ugh. But I walked into Tower Records in Seattle, and I walked in there and bought Injustice for All. <laughs> and the first song that I learned how to play on the electric guitar was One. Yeah. And then now I'm just kind yeah. of... I'm into anything that sounds like the vocalist is going to scream but doesn't. Like, I love it Like when the guitar lines are super, 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 super heavy, but there's still a melodic presence mm -hmm. to it. Um, that's probably, like, Ozzy in me, you know? That's where that's coming. I love Avenged Sevenfold. And then... 
obviously I've been spending a lot of time playing bluesy stuff, right? Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, lives in me, and I will never be able to be that good. But that's uh, that's what I feel when I'm playing. Is I feel the ghost of Stevie. Yeah, I think I like I'd like to feel the ghost of Jimmy. Uh, Jimi Hendrix has kind of been one of my big yeah. early influences, but I don't think I'm that good. Um, that said, I have a great time with it. I'm not high as he was, uh, but yeah, I do a good, a good enough job, right? Yeah. I like to think of myself as a pure rhythm player, and, and I mean, it helps me with my vocals because it kind of gives me that shield. And allows me to do something else other than just stand there looking awkward with a microphone. Um, Didn't you and a buddy of ours do um, like a Green Day cover set, like every Halloween uh, or something? My my buddy Anthony and Anthony I. Anthony and you. We did a lot of Green Day. One one year we actually dressed up for my Halloween party because we, the four years that he and I lived together, and this is my hetero life mate by the way. My wife calls him my first wife. Um, we had a Halloween party every year, and one year he dressed up as Kyle Gass and I was Jack Black, and we performed as the D. Uh, we even had a friend of ours, yes, we even had a friend of ours do uh, the Paul F. Tompkins introductions. We, we took a break. We did a second introduction, um, and... My deck nearly fell apart with all the people out there having a good old time. <laughs> uh, it was rotten as hell. Um, so yeah, we we used to do that kind of shit all the time. Anthony was a huge Green Day fan though, so he he learned all of the Green Day songs and cool. So, well, comments have died down. Rodrigo, ah, oh, miss you, buddy. He is a good. He's a a friend. You know, my buddy Rodrigo. Rodrigo whom? Uh, Soro, right here. Right. He is another, uh, probably one of the best things to happen in the pandemic for me. Um, so, cool story. I wanted to put together a four-part split-screen recording of Alien Ant Farm's Attitude. Okay. And so I went Googling for drum tracks. Now, before you go any further, yeah. Attitude, is it happened to be... A Misfits cover? Oh, I don't think so. Attitude. No. no. You got some fucking attitude. No, not that no? one. Okay. No, no. Well, we, we should. That was Danzig it. era Misfits, by the way. So I go Googling for drum tracks. Okay. And the first thing I find is a, a track that this guy laid down. And so I didn't want to steal it. So I approached him and I said, hey, this is what I want to do. Would you be interested? Would you be willing to um, send me your, send me your. What do you call them? <laughs> send me your beats. <laughs> and uh, no, what do you call it? Like what? Like the, the, your sticks? S send me your track or whatever. Um, so send he was me that he, recording that so you did. So he worked with yeah. me on that, and we did a and we did a four part arrangement, like instrumental arrangement, which I'll post later. Right on. Um, and then we've stayed in touch, and he lives in Mexico, and I live in freaking Washington State, and we check up check up on each other, and make sure we're all. Handling everything cool and well from up here in international South Alaska, relationships, man, they're, they're good. From up here in South Alaska, hello, Rodrigo. I am going to uh, share his stuff on here too, because man, if there's, I haven't seen the drummer that good in a long time. So. Sweet. And he teaches as well. So, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up because uh, it looks like everyone is done. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining us yep. tonight, giving us some ideas, having a little chat. Um, you know, we're going to come back next, our next episode. I think we're going to have more fleshed out kind of oh, topics yeah. and go through. We still want to have that conversation. So come ready to, to add some comments and some flavor to the conversation. Um, and give us more impact, um, uh, input, excuse me, on impactful know, <laughs> input, impactful input on what you want to hear, what you want to talk about. Cause we will bring it to you, uh, whether it's the next episode or if it's later on down the road we're going to take all this stuff compile it and try to figure out how to get it into an episode uh we want to give you what you need and what you want yeah. um we're also going to try to put in you know what we think is going to be valuable uh for all of us 
Uh, again, we're a, we are a community. We're a part of that community. We're not just talking to the community. So yeah, um, appreciate you joining us, uh, keeping us alive. I like Scott's idea of deconstructing some guitar solos. I think that's something that we can also do like pretty reactively. So while we're planning, while we're planning bigger shows, we can still kind of go live and do actual like technical work. Um, yeah. Yeah, we could you know, sure. tear down some guitar. Hell, I'll... this thing is acting weird for me. This stupid five-way switch on the Strat that I built. This is my favorite guitar because I built it myself, but the switch sucks. So <laughs> maybe I'll take this thing apart and go. show you all how to wire it, and um, and then we'll it'll put it back together. An episode, and then we'll put it back together, and we'll work on like all along the watchtower or something. Sweet. So I like that idea. Right on. Happy St. Patty's Day. Don't forget, fret less, rock more. Fret less, rock more, and. Uh, have a designated driver tomorrow. Yes. No bullshit. All right. Love you all. Peace.